It's Ramsey Dewey at the JX Fight Club in Shanghai, China. And today, I've got a question about how to improve kicking power. Generally, when people are talking about kicking power, they're talking about the, the roundhouse kick or the tie kick. But we also have to understand there are lots of other ways to kick. For example, push kick or an oblique kick or side kick or a back kick or hook kick, or <laughs> oh, Must be nothing. Anyway, but we also have to understand what power means. Power is the capacity to perform work. And the work we're doing in a fight is inflicting damage. And so... Damage to your bed. My grandma keeps on. that and she's Not dead. Again. Where are you? Up your butt and around the corner. <laughs> the boxing ring folks out. Okay, I'm, I'm here. Now, where are you? I'm in Navy SEAL, Special Forces Black Ops, 14th Screen Ninja Black Belt, Navy Fighting Style, except for PJJ. This PJJ isn't realistic in the streets, where I have an undisputed record of 500 consecutive wins by knockout in a single elimination tournament. Nobody on the internet fights better than I do. Everybody else sucks, and your squad form is bad. Frank Dukes? Is that you? Hey! Over here, buddy! <laughs> this is be too easy! easy. Whoa! It's the trolls! They actually showed up at my gym in person! Yeah, yeah, big deal! Hey, has anybody ever told you that you look like Elmo from Sesame Street? Has anyone ever told you you look like my butt? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> hey, has anyone ever told you you look like you, old Brenner? Hey, yeah, I actually like him. He's cool. You, Brenner, sucks! <laughs> All right. Come on, man, what are you guys, five? What, what are, are you, five? five? <laughs> burn, burn, major, burn, bro. <laughs> All right, look, trolls, I'm just trying to make a video here, okay? Now, you're welcome to stick around and watch, but I gotta get this done, okay? Hey, if we watch, that's gonna double as YouTube viewership. <laughs> Where you deliver your round kick is going to determine how you generate power for that kick. The outside leg kick to the lead leg, the inside leg kick to the lead leg, outside leg kick to the rear leg, right kick to the left side, Left kick to the liver. Right head kick with the power leg. Lead head kick. All of these are different. But we are going to address kicking that lead leg with our power leg. Kicking the quadriceps of the lead leg is a staple of mixed martial arts, kickboxing, and other combat sports. Fighters target large bundles of nerves stemming from the sciatic nerve that controls your ability to stand and walk upright. A few solid leg kicks in the right spot can drop an opponent and finish a fight. Powerful leg kicks are a valuable tool every serious fighter should have in their arsenal. However, the ability to position yourself, unbalance your opponent, and set up your kicks is even more important than power. Here's the thing about leg kicks and power. You must set up those kicks or your power will work against you. If you lead with a power leg kick, you're basically advertising, please check this kick to your opponent. You've got to set them up. You cannot lead with a kick like that or he will check it. As you saw right there, your shin can snap. If you're squeamish, you might want to look away because you're about to see a lot of broken legs in rapid succession. This is a reminder, set up your kicks. And if your opponent kicks you first, 
fight the temptation to immediately kick him back in the exact same way. That's our instinct. That's exactly what he wants. Set those kicks up. A good setup and a solid position is far more valuable than power. But since you asked how to develop more power, well, I'll give you my perspective. Now there are tons of videos on this subject. A lot of them are pretty good. In this video I'm going to cover a few basic principles for those who don't know anything about kicking and for more experienced fighters and kickers a few details that I personally like to focus on that are not often taught elsewhere. If you're still with me after that, use the bottom of your shin for leg kicks and not your feet. Feet break really easily and do far less damage. Now, for the boring reality of developing kicking power. The main key is gross repetition, consistently over long periods of time. Basically spend years and years kicking a solidly packed heavy bag. Hundreds of times every day. Kick the pads hundreds of times every day for years and years. And make sure to log plenty of time playing in the ring with your sparring partners, working on your setups so you can actually land those kicks in a fight. Remember when Bruce Lee said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once. I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. Well, make Bruce Lee afraid of you. And do another 10,000 kicks and make him more afraid of you. And then another 10,000. And another. And another. And another. And never stop making Bruce Lee afraid of you. There are six principles I want you to pay attention to. One, when you practice with the bag, kick the front of it, not the side. Two, make a falling step at a diagonal. Three, step in the direction you want to kick with your standing leg. In other words, step with your standing leg in the direction you want to kick. Four, pivot on the standing leg. Five, push off with the toes of your kicking leg. And six, articulate your arms correctly. Let's start with footwork. The blue line is the center line. Step diagonally off the center line with a turned out leg. If your standing leg is turned in, your kicks will suck and possibly be more dangerous to you than to your opponent. The standing leg is the single most important factor for generating kicking power. Now right here, see I'm standing right in front of the bag, not taking a step, kicking the side of the bag as a lot of people do. Fix that. Step off the center line. Create that angle and create that power. Step and kick, step and kick, step and kick. Two main kicking styles that I use. One, the leg swings horizontally as the upper body violently folds forward, like a percussive sit-up accompanying the kick to amplify its power. And two, this one, arcing the kick up and down in a rainbow-like motion. Since your opponent's lead leg is sloped at an angle, this version is great to weaponize gravity. You'll see here I actually sloped the bag at an angle to mimic what a quadricep does in a fighting stance. This also minimizes the possibility of your opponent shin checking since your leg can go over the shin check. Articulating the arms correctly is important both offensively and defensively. Swinging the arms opposite the kick generates power, but do it right. Instead of throwing both arms down, Swing the rear arm between the neck and shoulder to protect from a straight right counter, and swing the lead arm toward your opponent. This lead arm position can serve to parry oncoming strikes, or quickly become a reverse collar tie should your opponent step into your round kick to jam it. Next, pivoting on the standing leg, basically a pirouette on the balls of the feet of the standing leg. Here's an exercise my students do. Use the ropes of the boxing ring to hold up your kicking leg while you pivot 180 degrees and back on the standing leg. Make sure to swing your arms correctly at the same time. 100 reps per side per day will certainly help. Try this. Try jumping as high as you can without bending at the knees. This is only possible by pushing the toes downward into a point explosively. Pushing off with your big toe with the kicking leg will add an extra boost to your kicks. If you don't push off with your toes, you're most likely trying to pull your leg off the floor with your hip flexors and slowing yourself down. So point that toe and look at the shape of that toe as I kick. 
Look at that still frame. The toe is pointed. Push off just like that. What? What are you? Some kind of ballerina? I don't even need toes to kick your butt! <laughs> You know, taking a ballet class would not be the worst thing in the world to do to increase your kicking power, because a round kick is basically the same thing as a pirouette from ballet. It's just done at a slightly different angle. Bruce Lee ain't afraid of you. Nobody's afraid of you. Jerk. Let's talk about chambered round kicks. You'll often see these in Taekwondo and Karate. I use these exclusively for striking the head. If you need a few inches of extra reach, you can kick with the instep of the foot, but whenever possible, use the shin. The power of a chambered round kick comes from its speed, rather than throwing the body weight behind it. Now, I can't stress enough, a chambered round kick is a head kick. This is not to kick legs with. You will bust up your feet trying to do chambered round kicks on somebody's legs. Spare it for the head. To throw a chambered round kick, lift your knee as high as you can and pivot on your standing leg as you snap the kicking leg out and back as quickly as you can. In sharp contrast, the turning round kick or the tie kick has no chamber. The whole body is thrown violently in a circular motion. In my experience as a coach, the only thing harder to do than get civilized people to hit each other is to get them to breathe while they do it. Your breath and your voice are among your greatest assets as a fighter. You will move the way that you breathe and vocalize. So when you throw a powerful kick, exhale powerfully. Make some noise. Shout from deep in the diaphragm. This will tense the right muscles to expel destructive force and tense the right muscles to protect your internal organs from counter strikes to the body. You inhale automatically, but you must consciously exhale. So shout it out. Whoa. What now? Now you get trolled. You sure not wrap the sucks in your biceps, you puny. Did you think Bruce Lee wouldn't want to fight against Bob Lee? This is for Bruce! You're here by excommunicated from the Church of Jeet Kudo, and your chichis are sucks and uh, Nice nail polish! Oh man, I hope they're gone for good this time. So I could give you a bunch of other little tips and fine-tuning adjustments to try to make your technique better, and I'm sure you'll get a lot of comments like that down below from people who mention stuff that I didn't even think of bringing up, which could be very valuable advice. But I'm going to tell you the most important thing is get your reps in. One of my Thai boxing coach was this dude from Thailand named Chanan Sin Sub, and he was a three-time national champion in Thailand, including Lumpini Boxing Stadium champion. And this guy's kicks were phenomenal, like any Thai champion's kicks should be. And he was smaller than me, um, but he had much, much more kicking power. And I remember one day I asked him, how do you kick like that? How, how do you develop power like that in your kicks? He scratched his chin for a minute and said, what kind of kick? And I realized, oh, oh yeah, there are a bunch of different kicks, right? And I said, well, the, the roundhouse kick. What kind of roundhouse kick? I said, well, you know, a, a leg kick, a Thai leg kick. I realized in Thailand, they, when Thai is kick, they're all Thai kicks, right? He said, what, what, what kind of leg kick? I said, oh, okay, when you kick with your right leg to your opponent's lead left leg on the outside. So, okay. From five years old, till 10 years old, every morning, from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., kick the bags. From 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. every morning, from five years old to 10 years old, kick the pads. From five years old to 10 years old, every morning, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., play in the ring. By that he means spar. Kick, kick, kick. After that, then, good kick, he said.
Got to get your reps in, guys. There's no substitute for repetition. Man, if you're not getting at least 100 kicks a day per leg, and you feel like your power is lacking, do that. Kick a solidly packed heavy bag 100 times a day per leg with whatever kick you want to develop. Okay. I had a, another coach from Thailand um, years ago, and this, this guy was very little. And um, again, enormous power in his roundhouse kicks. And he was trying to teach me how to do it, and, and I, I kept kicking, and I kept looking at him, asking for like fine-tuning adjustments. Well, what about my technique? What about my foot placement? What about this? What about that? And he said, forget all that. Just kick harder. Like this. Boom! And he practically cut the bag in half with the shins. Man, this guy's like half my size. I'm like, okay, so I try to kick harder. And he's like, harder! So I kick it harder. Harder! I kick it harder. Harder! Boom! Kick it harder. Harder! Boom! And this went on for a while until finally, I don't know, something like clicked in my mind and my body and there was this connection and boom! Suddenly, the most powerful kick my body had ever produced came out. And he said, okay, good. Now every time, kick it just like that. I thought, man, that, that took so much focus and concentration and energy and determination. He was like, yeah, exactly. Every time, kick like that. So, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Don't listen to the trolls. Get out there and train.